Hello and uh, welcome to the first animation process tutorial. My name is Tiffany Lee. The game is called Harmonia and we're developing quite a bit of the artwork right now. So moving on to stage one, I had done a bunch of uh, sketch concepts previously to pass by the client and he decided to go with this particular design. And uh, this is where I'm starting with the rough key animation. So I'm just taking the two extremes. This is a walk animation I wanted. So it's kind of stretching forwards and backwards. And I think I'm working on the uh, idle animation here, but I didn't want it to be too over the top. <laughs> and started cleaning up the keys here. Just a little easier to work with uh, clean keys so I can keep the shape and the mass consistent when I'm working on the rest of the frames. Okay, yeah, those are the <laughs> actions that I'm doing all in the same timeline, and I'm just going to export them by frame sequences when I'm ready to make the sprite sheets. So I think the one of the primary rules of animation is maintenance of mass. So you can stretch and squash as much as you want, but try to keep the mass of your creature or object consistent throughout. That'll just make it a little more believable. <laughs> Otherwise it looks a little wonky. Obviously having issues with this mouth. <laughs> and lots of flipping back and forth to just double check that the movements and timing is uh, working out. And I tried to give it a little bounce, since it is a slime. I wanted it to look a little gummy. I'm not worrying about too much detail considering these sprites are going to be pretty small once they're up on the screen in the battle in the battle screens.
All right, and now that we've gotten all the keyframes sorted out, I'm uh, moving on to the in-betweens. And because the shape is pretty simple and there isn't too much extreme movement, I am choosing to just go directly to cleans for the in-betweens. Just checking timing. All right, there we go. And using the onion skin, I guess you can call it, And usually in betweening is, well, straight, right down the middle. That's your most common style. Once you get into more advanced animation techniques, uh, it's pretty common to go in thirds or eighths by favoring one key over the other to create a little more dynamic movement. But I'm not going to worry too much about that for a uh, game sprite. Particularly a monster game sprite. <laughs> I'll go into a bit more detail and uh, animation techniques when it comes to the characters. And sometimes we need to create a new breakdown in between the keys, the existing keys. And a breakdown is technically just an extra key. <laughs> so if a movement is not quite working quite as smoothly as you'd like, you can add an extra extreme to use as a keyframe. And we just call those breakdowns. And once I've gone over and corrected all the uh, the little bits and bobs of the in between and key animation, I get started on the tones. And this is done on a separate layer since I use the module system in Harmony to uh, generate tones. And this just makes it easier to edit if I need to without altering line art or colors later on down the line if we need to and kind of simplifies things when you're recoloring an object because the tone layer will automatically adjust to whatever base color you have in there. And same deal, I start with the keys with the tones and then go back in in between them all. Yep, sometimes it takes quite a bit of a trial and error <laughs> to work out the best. And you'll realize that I'm making sure every area has closed off lines because we do use the paint bucket tool to just fill in the shadows and block off the colors. Because this is a vector-based program, if there's a gap, it just refuses to color in. So we need to uh, make sure all those gaps are closed. And we do the exact same thing with the highlights. So the highlights, I usually use a red color just to differentiate from the shadows and the line layer. And again, it's on its own layer, and we use the highlight module to create the effect without having to worry about the color. And once more, just uh, in betweening those keys that I had done previously.
All right, and doing a test run, make sure everything is looking smooth, making my adjustments. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I guess you kind of have to be with animation because a little, just the minute little difference between two frames can really catch the eye and throw everything off. All right, so there we go, tones and highlights. And then we move on to the colors. So often I start with the base color and create a new palette for the scene. And you can tell I'm kind of closing off some gaps here. And I just quickly color in the highlight and tone layers in any color, it doesn't matter what. The uh, tone and highlight modules will register it all the same. Okay, finish off the base colors. There's my lovely gap. I decided to use a gradient for this little guy. Once I double check that all the colors are not missing and it's all working out, I'll start applying my tone module and my highlight module. So inside the tone and highlight modules, I'm adjusting the uh, contrast of the shadows and highlights and whether I want it blurred or not. And it automatically applies it to whatever layer it's connected to. That's what's great about Harmony just saves a lot of time. And I decided to experiment and try adding a little shadow to them. And because we've done our palettes on separate layers, now I'm going to start creating new palettes and new versions for the slime. So there's our original guy. And you see how the tone and highlight layers don't change? They are automatically applied to whatever palette I decide to give. I've done a little red guy, a little gray guy, and a little purple guy. And of course you can make an infinite number of different versions. Well, I think that about wraps it up. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory 
of an animation tutorial and I can get into more details with uh, the other animation principles as we go along. I'm also working on my own animated pilot episode called Shadow Magic. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can go check out my Patreon page. And my username there is Tifa. Thank you. See you again soon.